Hallelujah! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah! Amen. Yes, praise the Lord. Thank you. You can go over there now. Thank you. Well, a very happy Easter to you. A very happy Resurrection Sunday. Thank you so much for tuning in to our Easter Sunday morning service with Binfield Free Church. We're so glad you could join us for this time of celebration, celebrating that Jesus is alive. And we're going to begin our time of celebration with the very word of God from Matthew's Gospel and the 28th chapter, and I'll start reading from verse 1. Matthew chapter 28, verse 1, and it's got a heading in my Bible, Jesus has risen. Let us receive the word of God. After the Sabbath, that's Saturday, at dawn on the first day of the week, that's Sunday, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. And then comes the greatest news any ear has ever heard in the history of the world. Matthew chapter 28 verse 6. He is not here. He has risen. Just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead. And is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Amen. This is the word of God. Let us worship God in prayer on this Resurrection Sunday. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come to you now through your risen and exalted Son, Jesus, and by your Spirit. Our Father in heaven, all glory belongs to you. For you have fulfilled your word and brought your Son, our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, through death to resurrection. His resurrection is proof positive that he defeated sin, death and the devil on the cross. Our Father, let this news of redemption spread far and wide, that the joy of the good news of Easter would be received in faith throughout the world. Our oh, Father in heaven, we praise you, for you have opened up to us the way to eternal life in the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, please embolden us by the resurrection of your Son, to be fearless in the face of disease, chaos, loneliness, and even sorrow in this world. Father, please give us the same expectation that Job had. May we know that our Redeemer, Jesus, lives. And may we know that we shall be resurrected and glorified to live with Jesus in his eternal kingdom. 
We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our resurrected Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. So our main uh, Bible reading for this morning's message comes from John's Gospel and the 20th chapter. John chapter 20, beginning with the first verse. And the heading in my Bible says, The Empty Tomb. Let us receive God's word. Early on the first day of the week, again Sunday, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been. One at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you were looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Then Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Well, amen. This is the word of God, and may he bless the reading and the preaching of his word. Let us pray for the preaching of God's word. Our living God, help us. Please help us to hear your holy word. Please help us to hear your holy word, that we may truly understand, and that by understanding we may believe, and that by believing we may follow you in faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honour and glory in all that we do, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Now, on this Easter Sunday morning in 2020, 
Are you afraid of what the future holds? Are you afraid of death? Are you afraid of bad news? Well, today there are many people all over the world living in fear of the future. They're living in fear of death and they're living in fear of bad news. Well, the good news is because of Easter, you don't need to fear the future. Because of Easter, you don't need to fear death. And because of Easter, you don't need to fear bad news. The message of Easter is proof to us that God loves us and cares very much about our physical lives. The message of Easter is that Jesus died for our sins and rose from the dead. Because Jesus died for us, we know that God loves us. The Bible tells us that Jesus died for us because God loves us. Let us just have a look at three verses that prove this to us. The first one is Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. What do we read there? The Apostle Paul writing to the local church in Rome. And in chapter 5 and verse 8 he wrote this. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners... Christ died for us. Let's have a look at another two. What about the Apostle John's letter to the churches? His first letter and the third chapter and the 16th verse to begin with. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 16. What do we read there? This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And then what about 1 John chapter 4 and verses 9 and 10? What do we read there? This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Amen. So Jesus' death is proof that God loves us. And Jesus' resurrection is proof that God cares very much about our physical lives. Well, how? How does Jesus' resurrection prove that God cares about our physical lives? Well, this morning, we're going to look at the answer to that question. Now, John, one of Jesus' disciples, goes out of his way to show us, to prove to us, that Jesus really did physically and bodily rise from the dead. And he also really goes out of his way to prove to us that the resurrection life is very physical. What did Jesus say to doubting Thomas in John's Gospel, chapter 21? And verses 27 to 29. Sorry, John chapter 20 and verses 27 to 29. Then Jesus said to Thomas, put your fingers here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you've seen me, You have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And Luke's gospel also proves to us that Jesus' resurrection was physical and bodily. 
And Luke also goes out of his way to prove to us that the resurrection life will be physical. What do we read in Luke's Gospel and uh, the 24th chapter? Luke chapter 24 and verses 39 to 42. Again, this is the word of God. Jesus said, look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still not, did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. And then in John chapter 21, we read again of Jesus enjoying being with his friends and eating breakfast with his friends by the Sea of Galilee. Isn't that incredible in John chapter 21? The risen Jesus enjoying breakfast on the beach with his friends. And I love this little detail from our main Bible reading, John chapter 20 and verse 15. He, thus Jesus, asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you were looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've put him, and I will get him. Now, why does John include that detail about Mary thinking that Jesus was the gardener? Well, I think John must have had the book of Genesis open on his desk when he was writing his gospel. Because John's gospel starts exactly the same way as the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then John's gospel begins with, in the beginning was the word. So John has obviously got the book of Genesis in mind. And what do we actually read in Genesis chapter 2, the first book of the Bible, and then the second chapter, Genesis chapter 2 and verses 8 and 9. What do we read there? Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. Isn't that exciting? The Lord God planted a garden. The Lord God is a gardener. And the Lord God planted the most beautiful garden the world has ever seen. Now the fact that Mary thought that the risen Jesus was a gardener is a hint to us that the followers of Jesus are heading back to the Garden of Eden. We're heading back to paradise. Now Jesus' followers aren't going to be spirits in heaven forever. I don't know what your image of heaven is. Is it an image of people sitting on a cloud playing a harp? Now, I've got nothing against harps, or clouds for that matter, but I don't, do, don't want to be sitting on a cloud for all eternity playing a harp. No, Jesus' followers are going to be given resurrection bodies just like Jesus' resurrection body. What do we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15? The Apostle Paul right into the local church at Corinth, 1 Corinthians 15 and verses 51 to 56. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, 
but we will all be changed in a flash in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed for the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality then the saying that is written will come true death has been swallowed up in victory where O oh, death is your victory where O oh, death is your sting the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law but thanks be to god he gives us the victory through our lord jesus christ jesus christ is coming back to raise the dead and to give resurrection bodies to those who trust in him and jesus is also coming back to create a new heaven and a new earth what do we read in the book of 2 peter and the third chapter the apostle paul peter right into the church 2 peter chapter 3 2 peter 3 and this is 10 to 13 but the day of the lord will come like a thief the heavens will disappear with a roar the elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare since everything will be destroyed in this way what kind of people ought you to be you ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of god and speed its coming that day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat but in keeping with the promise we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells those who trust in jesus will live with him forever and ever in the new heaven and the new earth with their resurrection bodies what do we read in the last book of the bible the book of revelation the revelation of jesus christ that was given to john so right to the back of the bible revelation chapter 21 and the first four verses wonderful words in the bible revelation 21 verses 1 to 4 then i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea i saw the holy city the new jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away amen now the imperfect world we live in now has so much life color and activity in it doesn't it we've got trees we've got flowers fields, plants, fruit, veg, birds, fish, sea creatures, animals, mountains, hills, rivers, lakes, beaches, lots of interesting people living on this earth. And all the things that we love doing are physical things like eating delicious food and exploring the world with the people that we love. All of our favourite things in life is about enjoying God's creation. 
Now, God has given us eyes so that we can see colours. He's given us ears so we can hear sounds like the birds singing. He's given us a nose so we can smell flowers and good food. He's given us tongues so we can speak, so we can sing and taste good food. He's given us the sense of touch so that we can hold our loved ones. God doesn't want to give us all of that just for 70, 80 or maybe 90 years. He wants us to enjoy all of that with him forever and ever in a perfect new creation. Now, when I worked in a warehouse in Swansea, I made friends with a Christian man named Martins, and he was from Nigeria. Now, Martins was very close to his sister, who was living back in Nigeria, and Martins was due to go and visit her very soon. But one day, Martins' sister sadly and suddenly passed away. Now, understandably, Martins was in a very bad way. Uh, so I took him to see my minister. And Martin spoke for a very long time about all the things he was looking forward to doing with his sister when he went back to Nigeria. He was saying that he was looking forward to going on walks with her to their favourite places. He was looking forward to cooking and eating their favourite food together. And at the end, I remember my minister saying to Martins, Martins, you will see your sister again at the resurrection. And you will be able to do all those things that you love doing with her forever and ever in the new creation with Jesus. They will be so much better in the new creation. Now that is your hope. Because of Jesus' resurrection, in the end, everything is going to turn out perfect for those who trust in Jesus. Now, a lot of people have been quoting uh, that uh, John Lennon quote at the moment, haven't they? What is it? Everything will be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. Everything will be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. Well, because of Jesus' resurrection, in the end, the very end of time, everything is going to be more than okay for those who trust in Jesus. Now, right now, a lot of people are obsessed about knowing when things are going to get better. When is the lockdown going to be lifted? When is social distancing going to end? When can I physically be with my family and my friends again? When can I go and explore the world again? When can I go to the beach again? When can I eat my favourite food again? When can I go swimming again? Well, in this life, things might not get better. Things might get even worse. There may be other diseases and other pandemics on the way. There may be more wars and natural disasters. But because of Jesus' resurrection, for those who trust in Jesus, in the end, Everything is going to turn out perfect forever. Now, my friends, can you say that everything is going to turn out perfect in the end for you? Are you trusting in Jesus today? Do you believe that Jesus is God who loved you and died for your sins? Do you believe that Jesus is God who rose from the dead to give you new life? Have you turned away from your sins? Are you following Jesus as your Lord and Saviour today? If not, why don't you start today? What better day than Resurrection Sunday, than Easter Sunday 
to start following Jesus. Call out to Jesus today. Admit to Jesus that you are a sinner who needs forgiveness. Tell him that you want to turn away from your sins. Ask him to forgive you your sins. Thank him for dying on the cross for your sins. Thank him for rising from the dead to give you new life. Tell Jesus that you want to trust in him and follow him as your Lord and Saviour. Will you do that today? Because of Easter, we don't need to fear the future. Because of Easter, we don't need to fear death. Because of Easter, we don't need to fear bad news. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we can know that God loves us and that he cares very much about our physical lives. Now may God the Father and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, be merciful and gracious to you on this Easter Sunday. Amen.